do you know that I've never gotten a real rose? And just in case somebody's watching this that I'm dealing with, no, somebody did not buy me this rose. But you shouldn't be worried about it because you should have bought me a rose. Let's get into your February 2017 love reading. Now, obviously, we're in the middle of the month. So don't try to place this energy in a box. This, this resonates with you. Energies that I'm going to speak on are going to play out throughout February. But it's not like they're going to start at February 1st and end February 28th. Is this a leap year? No, I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. Don't judge me. But <laughs> basically, it's energy. So this could be something that's been going on for a while that's continuing to play out in February. I don't know. It just depends. Hey Leo, let's see what you should know about your love life in February 2017. Spirit, what do you want Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising to know about their love life in February 2017? We've got the Major Arcana of the Fool. This is a new beginning, a fresh start. Take a leap of faith. Spirit is telling you to trust. You're going to learn a major lesson in trusting your own judgment, trusting yourself, knowing that um, no one can make this decision for you. You you can't, I don't know, I just get this, this feeling of you can't help who you love. And it's about you allowing love to flow through you and trusting wherever that it leads you will ultimately either teach you a lesson or... Um, liberate you in some way so it's about finding closure it's about moving on moving moving closer it's about moving closer towards what it is that you want um, and further away from what it is that's not good for you the fool is about our spirit that energy within us that wants to pounce that wants to act that wants to start over even if it doesn't make sense it's just that uncontrollable desire within us as human beings as souls as spirits on this planet to take another route to focus I don't know I feel like a lot of you are going to be focusing on yourself you're like if love is supposed to catch up with me then I'll see it. I'll see it coming but for now I'm just I'm just jumping I'm just diving and if I find someone I find someone if I don't I still believe that it'll happen for me later it's about sheer optimism just feeling, you know, like, I don't know, many of you have just been coming out of like a dark situation. It could be, a you know, a relationship that was long term, that was rough, that was chaotic, that, you know, I just see you guys making it out on the other side of something. And feeling like, look, man, I just want to be single. You know, I, I, I don't want to be tied down to anyone. This, again, this can play out in many ways for you, this trust card, the fool. Or you're ready to start a new relationship and you're just open to, to whatever happens. You're just feeling like whatever happens, happens. And I'm open to, to any outcome. I just want to experience love. This is a lesson that you're going to have to learn because the fool is a major arcana. So it's about letting go of your worries, your fears, and your doubts. Okay, so spirit, how will this energy manifest for Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising in February 2017? How will this lesson of the full manifest for Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising? We've got the Two of Swords. So some of you, you like somebody, but you're not willing to say anything. You're waiting on them to make the first move. Spirit is telling you to take a leap of faith. You're wondering what they're thinking, if they like you, if, if, if this is just all in your head. Spirit is saying, act. Go for it. Don't really worry too much about that. Stop being indecisive. Stop being passive. Because you may, um, you know, give off a signal to the other person that you're not interested. Maybe they're responding in that way because you're responding in this way. Take this as an opportunity to start fresh, to start over. Don't really look at this person as, you know, a replica of your ex. Just give this person a chance. Not because they're just, they're, they have the potential to, you know, be Mr. Right or Mrs. Right or or do right by you. They may be even worse than your ex. But it's about you opening up to love. Because at the bottom of the deck. While I was shuffling. We got the ten of swords. This is about you feeling. It goes back to the energy of the January video. It's about you feeling. Like something came crumbling and crashing down in the past. And, and maybe. 
all of a sudden you've got all of these feelings for somebody out the blue. This is for some of you. And you almost don't know what to do with them. But with that energy of the full spirit is just telling you to just take it easy. Just just um, embrace it. Don't really get all choked up and, 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 and allow your fears to cloud your judgment. Just say how you feel. Keep it light. Keep it casual. Get the answers that you need. A lot of you with this uh, Two of Swords as your central energy. There's there's things that you want to know. You may have a crush on your friend or your friend may have a crush on you. There's just this whole holding back kind of thing. Crossing it, we have the star. Now, this is about healing. This is about... Um, in this deck, I just always think about a woman who is dealing with a man who may be... Um, A woman who's not really asking for anything. Now, this could pertain to you as a Leo, male or female. But it's just about giving and not really worrying about receiving. And this is a major arcana and it's crossing this two of swords. So know that um, love is a major part of your healing. This relationship that you're dealing with is a part of your spiritual growth and your spiritual journey. Everything is a part of your spiritual journey. But it's really connected with you learning the lesson of true self-confidence. Because we here we have your card. This is the strength card. This is soft strength. This is being yourself. And, and knowing that you don't have to hold your tongue. That this person will accept you for who you are. And if they don't, it's okay. They will experience, they will learn some sort of lesson from you. Um, it's about you not holding on too tightly. Again, it says trust. And she's kind of letting go and just kind of falling into a situation. So this really speaks to falling in love. And, um... And getting your hands dirty when it comes to, um, because here she is, she's kind of taming this wild beast. And then we've got the, the star. This is about stripping down to the real us. This is about you, um, really not wasting your time with, like, pretending. Stop pretending to be something that you're not. Stop feeling like you got to hold back. If you like this person, say something. And if they don't feel the same way. Who cares? This is about you not being afraid to be the type of woman or the type of man you are when it comes to romance. Now you are Leo's rule, the fifth house of romance, of children, of love, of of entertainment, things like that. So this is about you have no regrets. Do what it is that you want the first time. Stop holding back. Stop second guessing yourself and wondering if this person is going to accept you and what they think of you and if they think that you're pretty and you're smart and, and if they want to be in a relationship with you. Do what it is that you want to do. Here we have the magician in your reality or your subconscious mind. We've got the magician is about manifesting exactly what it is that we want. Forget about who you were in the past. You're a... You, you're a completely different animal. I just get that vibe from this strength card. You've learned. You've grown. Embrace this new part of yourself. Trust that you will be accepted. That you will be embraced for who you are. You know, many of you are afraid of running somebody away. You're afraid of coming on too strong. You're, you're, you want somebody to like you. In the past, we have the Nine of Wands. And this is just about your energy being at a very... Um, pivotal point when it comes to like your feelings just being right on the surface and you feeling very passionate about something or a relationship or you wanting to wanting a relationship with someone in some way or you wanting something from someone because as you can see she's kind of just like all up in here you know they're into each other they're staring into each other's eyes there's so much passion going there but they've got it under control because the nines are about mastery so you've been holding out you've been you've been Again, it goes back to this element of self-control, discipline. But I don't know, I just get this vibe of like control issues. In the near future, we have the Queen of Pentacles. So this is about being a little cold romantically and focusing too much on your finances. Not because it's the Queen of Pentacles, but in connection to all of these cards. It's, it's You're making excuses as to why you can't do something when it comes to love. Or why you can't make forth make the effort or maybe your partner is doing this and maybe you're trying to get them to to change that 
You want this love to grow because we have the Ace of Cups here. Something is there between the two of you. And this is the first reading to where I feel like it's actually a relationship reading. But it feels like maybe you're not paying attention to the fact that your partner is wanting you to take the lead. That the, your partner does have strong feelings for you. And maybe they just express them in a, in a different way. Stop holding back. Stop playing these little mind games. Let go of your control issues. Here we are with the Nine of Swords, you overthinking, or this is your partner, or you trying to just get them to be hooked on you in some way. It's just a lot of manipulation, but it's okay. It's just it's just the way that, that we all do when we want somebody to like us, when we want somebody to stick around. Now, the energy that you're manifesting due to your hopes and fears, we've got the Death card. This is transformation, so many of you are ready to take things to the next level with somebody, but it's a little scary. You don't want to come on too strong and you don't want them to view you in a what in a light that's not true to who you are. Spirit is saying make a decision based on what it is that you want with justice being here. Is this something that you really want or are you being pressured? I don't feel like you're being pressured into it. Trust. This is a new beginning. Know that don't worry too much about if it'll turn into a relationship or don't worry about if you'll give if you'll marry this person or if they're your soulmate or whatever because ultimately you are manifesting some sort of ending. Does that mean the end of the relationship? No. It rem it it speaks to it being the end of a chapter. And 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 not doing and not continuing to try your best or allowing your partner or this person you're interested in or just anyone who's going to come into your life um, when it comes to love, to, I don't know, I just get this vibe of you need to know what it is that you want. Because with this two of swords being your central energy, with the star, you've got to do what's best for you. If this is marriage, if this is sex, if this is, you know, getting into a, a relationship, if this is, you know, reconciling with an ex or something, make sure it's something that you want to do. And don't and don't make any quick decisions because thing, uh, things are going to fall into place when it comes to the relationship. It feels like, I don't know, I just feel these control issues and you trying to get somebody to like you and the outcome is the will of fortune. They do like you. It will work out in your favor. You will get that relationship, that offer of relationship. Well, there is an opportunity for you to be with this person, but you've got, it just feels like with this energy of the Five of Swords, this Queen of Swords, this Seven of Swords, you're all in your head, or somebody, this Knight of Swords, you could be dealing with an air sign, an Aquarius, a Libra, or Gemini. Or you could be exhibiting these traits, but I think that it's your partner because in your environment or just the position of your partner in all of this, we've got the Nine of Swords. So someone is playing mind games and it's, and Spirit is telling you to take a leap of faith. Again, for them to tell you trust, for them to be teaching you the lesson of the fool and then the outcome to be the will of fortune. And then for the overall energy to be popping up as the Ten of Swords again, this is about you not recognizing that you deserve more. And that this person may not be perfect, but that you can take the energy of this, this magician here and make this situation something that works for you. Make something out of nothing. Really do something with this relationship. Do something with this time of you being single. Stop sabotaging the relationship or the development or the growth of the relationship and what it could be if you are dealing with someone, whether it's new or if you're in a committed relationship or if you're married. I don't know, there is an element of selfishness going on, things working out in your favor. I feel that many of you are, for some of you, I get this whole revenge of the ex kind of thing. Um, what do you get from this? 
for many of you, I see you getting what you want. If it's you wanting to be single, if if it's you um, getting that guy's number that you at work that you you know have been looking at for the past seven months, <laughs> or uh, um, you taking your relationship to the next level, feeling love, feeling um, adored, feeling like this relationship is one that's a full experience and something that's kind of going places. That will be confirmed for you, whether it is or it isn't. In February, because the Nine of Swords is about you wondering, you thinking, and, and, and your partner in some way not being clear with you when it comes to what it is that he, he or she wants from you. But I see you working at it, and you want something with them. So regardless of the outcome, you will the Wheel of Fortune is going to be turning in your favor. So it's either going to be about you phasing um, the universe, phasing this person out so that they can make room for another person. It could be anything, but overall with the message of trust, they're telling you to just jump and you will fall exactly where you need to. But it's not about falling head in, head over heels in love with somebody and landing flat on your face and, and then blaming them and thinking that they were the bad guy. No, you were being too impulsive. You weren't, you didn't learn the lesson of true self-confidence of, um, of letting love find you, of manifesting of manifesting exactly what it is that you want when it comes to love, as opposed to just accepting the the little that someone is willing to give you. Many of you just want to be in a relationship with somebody and you fe it feels right. It feels like there is something there between the two of you, but that person may not may not want any kind of commitment for whatever reason because with this queen of pentacles in the future that's where you're headed the queen of pentacles she doesn't like just to she doesn't like to give herself away to just anybody and if she does there will be no emotions involved everything that she does with her with her body with her energy with her time is based on what she feels and believes is best for her so with this death card being here as the energy you're manifesting due to your hopes and fears, some sort of truth will be revealed. But it will work out in the in the end for you. You may a person may phase out of your life, or maybe they already have, but the wheel of fortune is gonna keep turning, so maybe they're gonna keep coming and going. Coming and going. And I think that they're gonna be coming and going because you you're keeping this door open. And spirit is telling you to free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. Many of you are in a relationship. You're running in circles. And, and you know, one minute it's up, one minute it's down. And it's it's a roller coaster ride. And I think that many of you just like the attention. Because here we are with the message of attraction. You attract romantic love by enjoying this moment fully. So many of you have been, you know, being yourself in the relationship, doing what it is that you need to do to show them or show this other person that you want that you want to be in a relationship with them, that you're serious about them, that your feelings are real, but not from this emotional place because again we've got the two of swords. It's more of like this body language, um, you know, nonverbal communication. And it will pay off for you in the end. Whether it means this person, you realizing that this person is not worth your time and that you're going places and that that's going to open up doors for you to meet better people who can do more for you and, and who can treat you right and treat you better. But I don't know, this Wheel of Fortune just really speaks to you needing to move on with your life with or without them. This Two of Swords, you see, they're just kind of like... <laughs> not saying anything they're just flirting and and she kind of feels like oh he's kind of like her project and you know because here she is again with this strength it just it gives her confidence to feel like she can work on this man or that you can work on this woman and that it could potentially go somewhere and it could that's going to be the outcome for some of you but for some of you you're going to have to keep moving because here you are in the past oh I hate seeing this card. At the bottom of the deck, we have unrequited love. There's not enough attraction or, or chemistry to keep this relationship going. Now, the attraction card just popped out before that. And it's about this back and forth. And, and with this energy of um, the fool and um, ultimately learning how to trust, trust yourself and to take a leap of faith when it comes to love, it's about... 
you shooting your shot when it comes to like wanting to be with this person because maybe they they're waiting on you to say something maybe they don't know if you're really in it and this is about for for me with this ten of swords being at the bottom of the deck this is about getting it over with like look man if you don't want to be with me let me know i really don't want to keep going in circles playing these games and making you feel good about the situation while i'm feeling trapped and feeling like my feelings are being limited i can't do this anymore Moving on with or without him. With or without her. And knowing that if it's meant, they'll catch up. I'll see, I don't know. I just get this vibe of I'll see you around. So that's the outcome for some of you with this death card. Representing an ending, a transformation. After a time of confusing, of confusion and mind games and, and worry and feeling like, is it real? Is it just in my head? Is this, are we, go, you know, asking all of these or having all of these questions but not necessarily getting the answers that you need or that you want? Spirit, what do you want Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising to know about their love life in February 2017? We've got separation. It says, time apart from your partner is on the horizon. And when I hear the word horizon, it really speaks to this wheel of fortune. Maybe there are opportunities that are calling you when it comes to your career or when it comes to like something you've been waiting on. And that's where your focus needs to be. And this person has got to go because in some way they're, they're being a distraction or they're a distraction in some way. Or it's just not time for you guys to take it to the next level. But that time will come. The wheel of fortune is ultimately about divine timing. Spirit, what advice do you have for Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising when it comes to balancing love and their daily life and this new beginning, these new opportunities that are going to be presented to them in February? Thank you. Mary Magdalene, unconditional love. Love yourself, others, in every situation, no matter what the outward appearances may be. So don't give up on this relationship. Don't give up on finding love. Don't think that this is over um, in terms of like, even if the, you and this person separate for a long time, like maybe years, lose contact, and you know communication gets cut off, cut off in some way, don't don't end it on a bitter note. Don't be angry. Don't send you know drunken texts about how much of a horrible person they are to to kind of not make any kind of effort. I know that that's a real you know scenario based kind of energy, but. It's about you realizing that now it's just not the time to really focus on love. You've got other things. For some of you, it is. This wheel of fortune will be turning in your favor. But there will be some sort of end. And that's confirmed with this um, separation. But it's not a long-term final end. The, the death card is about something that's final. A, a chapter being closed forever. So many of you, maybe you were dealing with somebody in whatever way, in whatever fashion for a significant amount of time. But now... Time, time, times are changing and there, there's going to be this distance between the two of you and maybe that'll get them to act right and to see that, you know, they can't just keep on two of swords in you and just being indecisive and that you can't be that way either so that when you do see each other, um, you can be the star to where you guys can both be honest with each other. But right now, like I said, time apart from your partner is on the horizon. So that could really speak to you just having to focus on another area of your life potentially going through a breakup and it need it being the final one it can't be this whole makeup just to break up and make up again it has something feels final if you want to um improve another area of your life spirit is telling you to trust that this is your new beginning this is what you've been waiting on and that if your relationship is holding you back it's time to separate you've got to do what's best for you and that's the queen of pentacles you see she's kind of leaving him on the floor you know things are changing Whereas, whereas before, she was, well, in the past, she was on his lap, giving, giving him all of her energy. This could be you if you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. It's just energy. But just giving yourself. And then it just kind of, I just feel you guys are going to be hitting a brick wall. And you're going to be realizing that you're growing at, at a, a rapid pace. And that things are happening for you. And that this love for you is kind of stifling you in a way. And that we either are just going to put it on pause until later or we're going to end this thing. But it can't stay the way that it is. Change. Separation is on the horizon. So maybe when you guys come back together, they'll have their thoughts together. But you guys must separate. 
And it really, this almost looks like the same scenario. And this is your central energy, indecision. So don't make any final decisions when it comes to getting into a relationship with somebody right now. Because with that will of fortune as an outcome, you may meet somebody who can treat you better. But it's not about saying that that's your reason because you could really love them. But it's about you, your life pulling you in a different direction. Two of Swords is about indecision. So, it's, but it's not about coming from a place of ultimatums. It's about not forcing something. If somebody doesn't want to tell you how they feel, if they don't want to make an effort, then you've got to move on. And that if it's real, you'll come back. And right now, before I even got to it, um, I am going to use the Shamanic Healing Oracle card to ask Spirit how you can manifest more love into your life. But I see you being upset, and I see you being angry, and I see you throwing yourself into your work and trying to prove something, either to your ex or to this person that you've been trying to get with or that you feel like you want to be with, but they either act like they're too good for you. Or in some way, because we're dealing with that air sign, you're dealing with your opposite because fire is balanced. Fire signs, soulmate energy is air sign so that they can learn a lesson of not being so self-absorbed and going within the mind and going deeper and um, just not, things just not being all about themselves. And, you know, before I even pull the card, we've got masculine energy and we've got anger. So I, I just feel a bit of resentment and it goes back to that energy of control. And then we've got reunion of souls underneath so that's about you needing to accept the fact that this is a soulmate connection and that it's not over and that if it is over you've got to make peace with it you'll know the difference if it is if it's over or if it isn't but the two of swords it's like you both are hanging on or somebody's hanging on or somebody's manipulating or controlling the situation to keep the 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 energy where it is right now in this very passive kind of way. Many of you are trying to get a response from somebody who's just not giving it to you. And you can't sit back and wait anymore. Or else you're going to miss out on meeting someone else. Or, or And with that will of fortune being the outcome, you could actually meet someone else. Even though you may not be emotionally available to them because you're going through something with this other person. It's about you deserving a love that this person probably is not, you know, is not willing to give to you for whatever reason. And you having to just detach from the situation. How can Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising manifest more love, more peace, more light, and confidence to embrace these new opportunities when it comes to their life and their love life? inner journey this has to be about you this is all about you and then we've got the I, we've got the burden card here so this is about not carrying any type of doubt any type of um, resentment any pain any heartache any need for closure with you as you move on with your life don't be angry it's hard it's easier said than done but don't be upset know that this is just this is about you realizing that this is about you this is how you'll be able to heal. This is how you'll be able to grow and feel like, feel more confident about what it is that you're really insecure about. That's creating this, not necessarily desperation, but just this um, insatiable need to be with this person. It's really tied to a wound, but just a part of you that needs, that, that part of you that needs your attention. And because you don't know exactly what that is, with this message of inner journey, meaning that you're going to have to find that out or that you're, you're, you're in the beginning stages of finding out what that is so that you can begin to heal from it and, and move on with your life with or without this person. You're going to be able to feel liberated from a person and your feelings because, you know, when we like somebody, you know, when that Leo energy connects to somebody and they find somebody that, you know, catches your eye and makes your your heart flutter, it gives you that warm and fuzzy feeling within your, you know, in your stomach. It's hard to let it go. We're very passionate. We, as Leo, Sun, Moon, and Risings, find somebody that we want. We're not, you know, psycho. We're not creepy about it. We just know how we feel and we are naturally, you're learning this. Maybe this person, in dealing with this person, they kind of brought out 
this part of your Leo energy that just goes after what they want. And you could be dealing with somebody who's a little resistant to, you know, your love spell. And they're just like, no, a relationship. I don't want to be in a relationship. And you're like, okay, that's cool. But you still like them. And in a way, that's like, you're not really asking for much, but it just makes you feel like you're backed in a corner. And... You just want to be free from this corner. And I feel like in February, you're going to feel free from this corner. And how you can begin to attract more love, not just from this person, because you may not get it just yet with that unrequited love popping out. But how you can just feel happy and feel love within yourself and uh, be able to smile as you go through this is inner journey. So let's read it and then I'll let you go. Because I got to move on. So there go. All right. Not all who wander are lost. At times we are so consumed with our own personal journey that we project our journey onto another. Every soul arrives on this planet with lessons to learn and a life to live. For as many souls that are out there, there are many different journeys. Do not judge another's journey. Always respect where another person is on their path. Meet everyone you come in contact with where they are on their path. Do not insist they come to where you are. By doing this, you will not only expose those around you to, to your own healing vibration, but you will offer them acceptance without judgment. This is a great gift to both give and receive. So know that by letting them go and by moving on, this is equally good for you and good for them. That this separation is necessary and it won't be as difficult as you think happening in your life and in their lives as well. So you've got to let go so that it won't become this um, you know, it's like if I was to take this rose here, this beautiful, soft and delicate rose, if I love it so much to the point that I suffocated, that I kind of just put all my energy on it, it'll crumble, it'll die, it'll wither away. So this is about letting your hands, pulling your energy off of this person and understanding that they just may not be ready yet. And hell, they may not ever be ready in this lifetime, but you can't, that can't stop your show. You still, just as they have their path, you have yours. And yours may be pulling you in a different direction. So just like we have these two roses. If I was to take this one out, well, that's, that's like the vibe that I get. You both men roses were looking at life or just having different experiences. Oh, I'm getting into my, t my Sagittarius preacher teacher mode. But you're going to feel like something is just dying and withering away within your relationship or just in your love life. It's not. It's just evolving to a new phase. It's teaching you a new lesson. And you have to be okay with it. If you're single, I don't know, go watch a chick flick or something. Just just give your heart what it wants. And it's just it just wants that romantic experience. It doesn't have to come from another person, but just don't don't be stuck up in the house or or just in February or just in general as you go through this separation. Really get out there and create your life. Do things. Take risks. Learn about new things. That's what that Wheel of Fortune is the outcome is about. This being a blessing in disguise. If you haven't watched a January video, watch it because the title of that is Blessing in, Disgu in Disguise so you can see what those opportunities are. That are going to be coming your way as you deal with this separation or this kind of perceived um, or actual breakup. But know that the lesson, know that life goes on and that if it's meant, this person will come back. But the way that I'm looking at this, and I know that it's in the same vase, but it's not over. It's just that the separation is the difficult part. But you guys are still connected. This is if you're single and, you know, you're kind of looking back or... Or, or ready to just move on from the, a significant soulmate or karmic relationship that you dealt with. Know that it's going to take some time, but that you can move on. And you can find happiness and that you can meet somebody else. But that this person may come back and that you, you, you can't be bitter about it. That's what the message of this inner journey, inner journey is about. Having compassion for yourself when it comes to deciding to move on. And having compassion for them to let, go, let them go. Without it being this angry, bitter thing. That's how you can cope and deal and heal. As you go through this separation. And this won't apply to all of you, but to most of you. If you would like a personal reading, send me an email at yayacorder at gmail.com. It will be down there. So, that's all. I will see you in my next video.